Welcome back, everybody. It's 2015. Today, we're going to take a look at the euro and also a little bit of Bitcoin, maybe. All right, stick around. All right, everybody, welcome back. So glad that you're here. We've been off for a long time, but now we're right back into the saddle. We have our first full week of trading starting next week. And of course, uh, that means we need to know what's going to happen next week so that we know how to prepare for it. And today we're going to take a look at several different things. I have been getting a ton of requests for people who are interested in following Bitcoin. Now, I don't trade Bitcoin personally. But it doesn't mean that we can't use the same principles that I'm using to trade the regular currency markets to trade Bitcoin. So we'll take a little look at Bitcoin as well and talk a little bit about what's been happening there. We had a major crash there and, uh, and, and well, not a major crash, but we've been significantly declining under the $300 mark now. And so it's going to be interesting to see... Eh, where, where the opportunities are going to lie there in Bitcoin. So we'll take a look at that as well. Also on the docket today, Aussie dollar, Euro pound, uh, pound Aussie and Aussie CAD. Now, a little bit of the more extravagant pairs, I guess you could say, uh, this week. But one of the reasons that I want to cover them is because that's where the action is. And it doesn't do us any benefit to talk. We're going to talk a little bit about Euro USD, pound dollar. Uh, well, let's just get right to it. So... Taking a look here, let's start not with Bitcoin, but let's start right at the beginning back with Euro dollar. Now, here's the thing. Been on just a direct negative slide here. All the way from the high that came in around here at 139s, so we're now trading around 120. Can you believe that? We're down to 120 and the market's closing at a, just a terrible day. If I fatten this up, just had a terrible day selling off into the end of the year, or it's selling off on uh, the first, I believe, yeah. And, I'm sorry, that's the second, excuse me. Uh, the first first day of trading for the year was Friday, the second, and we saw that uh, the U.S. market sell off, or the, the dollar strengthen against other currencies. Yeah, if I could get it right. Sorry, I must be a little out of... Uh, a little out of practice. I've been off for a couple of weeks. But you can see now market going into an oversold condition. So let's consolidate here. And I'm actually going to bounce out to a weekly chart. And I'm going to show you what's happening here. So here, the little dotted line is where we sit now. So we actually closed below the previous lows that came in here back in 2012. So now we have to jump over one right back here to about 2010. And we have to take a look at the lows around there. And what I've done here is I've ID'd kind of the support level where that comes in at. Now you're going to see that comes in right there, right near where we're at now. It comes in about 1950s or 1960s, and we're trading currently about 1990s. So it's, I mean, it's just crazy to think that we're all the way here. But look, this is what I want to pay attention to. I always say look left, structure leaves clues, because it gives you a really clear insight as to where we actually sit relative to where the currency has been moving since basically 1994. My, my data here goes back to 1993, and then we see what happened in 94. We see the decline that happened into the 2000, uh, and then the rally that happened out of there, the huge rally out of the euro back up into the double top highs that existed around 160, followed by the 2008 crash, and then the consolidation that has occurred since then. But let's take a look at this. If we just go ahead and draw some of this stuff in here, we can see the little support level there, the trend line resistance level here, and I'll just uh, draw this in a little bit better, the support line that exists here. And we're sitting on this shelf right now, and the question will be, are we going to go under it, or are we going to rally back up into 133s or so to look for, uh, you know, for, for any type of shorting opportunities? Now, there are shorting opportunities before there. You can have shorting opportunities here around 127, uh, around 126 or 27s or 28s, around that area, as we're looking for this, as this market continues to decline. Or you can look to, you know, continue to sell into it. Now, one of the benefits of kind of the software that we're looking at developing in terms of this trend following strategy is, you know, you take, let's take the pound, for example. Let me just come back to here 
and we'll take a look at the pound. So when we look at the pound here, I'm not sure what's going on here. Okay, there we go. Look at this decline, just a straight decline, boom, 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 all the way from the highs at around 171s to now trading around 153s. And you look at that just waterfall and you say, well, man, how do I get in, how do I get on top of that? And you even cycle in a little bit closer and you just take a look at the last day and you say, man, the market dropped from 155s down to 153s. There's a 200 pip move there. And how do I get involved with that? And you look at the daily chart and you see, yeah, there were some pullbacks where you could have potentially gotten involved, a um, little harder to read. But when you look over at something like this, which is the pound, now I can't get you all of the data for the pound just simply because uh, the markets are, de are down right now. So Kinetic has not given me the, the enough data. But this is the end of the day. This is from about, um, or excuse me, this was all day yesterday. So this was the entire move from about the London session all the way until the close on the, uh, you know, at the end of the second. And so let's take a look at this. Now, as you can see, again, just a straight downward move. But this is the nice thing about these bars that we developed is that you can look inside. And it may be easier if I actually consolidate it up. You see the wicks that exist inside of these bars. Well, this, tell us, this tells us where price action retraced to inside of this downward movement. And this becomes really easy to sell. And one of the trend continuation trades that we have set up here is basically designed to take, I'm just going to take my line tool, and as this market starts to decline and we get red bars, I just go ahead and I start looking for a retracement back up into these previous structure, or this previous level, uh, or the top of the, of the, of the red candles. So as the market declines, we see we get our first retracement there, opportunity to sell. So our first selling opportunity came in the London session at around 155.30s. The market then just continues to track, and you just hold it because there's no reason to get out. Continue to track it all the way down, boom, 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 boom. The next opportunity came at 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, this would have been 6 o'clock uh, central time, so this would have 7 o'clock eastern time. Market rallies back up, opportunity to get short. This shorting opportunity comes in at around 54.33s, and it falls again. Didn't guess that one? Well, there's another one right there. A, th a third opportunity, a fourth opportunity. Four different opportunities over the course of the day to get involved in a major market-moving trend. And being able to look at the market in a completely different way really gives you some advantages because instead of looking at things let me just pull this back up again so instead of looking at things say let's just go down to um, a 15 minute chart okay you could look at it from this standpoint because the market basically this is where this is where we were we were looking at so this was the start of the move on the other chart let me just fatten this up a little bit here was your first option when do you get in? When do you get out? When do you hold? Versus coming over here and just looking at something like this. It's the exact same chart. It's the same information just displayed differently. And that's what makes these bars really powerful. And so for those of you guys who are looking for intraday trending opportunities, uh, we're calling this Project 221. And Project 221 may be the, you know, the, the right thing for you guys. So... Uh, but anyway, so the pound, both the pound and the euro just continuing their, you know, their waterfall and all signs point to continued downside there. Now let's take a look at Aussie dollar. Sorry about that digression, guys. Um, Aussie dollar, we talked about potentially having a, a finishing area here. You can see the market did kind of put in a V bottom here and then we ended up breaking down and closing below. So it will be interesting to see, is this going to be a false breakout or not? So as you can see, the previous support level coming in here on the hourly chart, market broke down, closed below yesterday. This would indicate further downside momentum. What's our typical play here? Well, we look for the retracement. We look for the retracement back up into previous structure support, which should then become resistance if the market will rally back up in there. And then we look for continuation to the downside. 
So keep an eye out on that euro pound. This was a pattern formation. Get back out on the daily chart. This was a pattern formation that we talked about a cipher pattern before the end of the year. Paid 55 pips on target one and 96 pips on target two. So a really, really nice trading opportunity that you had come your way there. Coming to you from the Forex Market Preview. Let's take a look at Pound Aussie. Pound Aussie on the daily chart, we are sitting at structure. So look left, here's structure. Let's get out on the weekly chart. I'm, I'm getting some higher time frame charts because it's the beginning of the year. It's always good to take a look, you know, get that really broad-based view of what the, what the chart is doing, where the market sits as of January, and we're right back down into that support level. And guys, this is, we're, we're bullish. We're looking for bullish opportunities. So buying opportunity there around 189.35 with anticipation of the market going higher. Getting back down on the daily chart. Um, you can see it structure right in there. So any type of, you know, from here, the way you would play this is to go down to your hourly time frame. You can see the hourly time frame still showing bearish. And so what you would need is some sort of uh, verifiable um, bullish signal here that tells us that the market's getting ready to rally. Now let's take a look at Aussie CAD. Let's get out on the daily charts. We got something we can look at. We talked about Aussie CAD last year. We talked about setting up your risk reward profile here. Market coming down, A, B, C, D move down into the 1414. We talked about buying them up right here at uh, around the 1414, around 9440s. And we looked at risk to reward. We said here would be the risk versus the reward here. And as you can see, markets dipped down in there. We started to rally out. We're into the money on that. And we're looking for a rally basically up into, if I adjust this a little bit, up into this previous structure level. Look left, structure leaves clues. The previous support level should become resistance. So if we can rally up into there, that's where we want to look at taking our profits off at. So again, any retest of here, any pullback down into the 1414, gives some of you latecomers an opportunity to get involved. Now, last but not least this week, let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin. Um, I'm going to go out on a weekly chart here and show you. I think we've talked a little bit about Bitcoin looking a lot like gold at this point in, in terms of the rally and the retracement. And I don't want to get too much into the, uh, I guess, the economics of this. But Bitcoin is not this magical thing that's going to go up and up and up and up and up. Uh, it, it's a commodity. It has essentially become a commodity of exchange. And it has no real value other than the fact that people can use it uh, in order to purchase goods or services. And so, you know, the most difficult part about trading Bitcoin is finding a reputable place to do the trading. Uh, but from an investment standpoint, I'm not necessarily against Bitcoin as an investment um, or as a hedge in the same way I would look at gold as a hedge. But it does concern me a little bit that people treat Bitcoin like it's like it's it, like it's going to be the thing that protects you against some sort of destruction of world fiat currencies, and you know that may come down the road. But right now, what we're seeing is Bitcoin acting a lot like gold. When people are really afraid, they go to gold and they go to Bitcoin. You see the saw the massive rally up in Bitcoin here, and now you're seeing the retracement. It's getting a lot more trading volume now. People are starting to trade it. That's why you're seeing the back and forth action. If we're looking for continued downside for areas to buy, then we'd have to be looking at the 127 extension around $120 uh, a coin. And this is going to give us, let me just see what this, this is. It's not going to give us a, an ABCD move, but it's going to give us something relatively close to it. Let me just do this, clone this uh, bad boy here. Actually, it's not even close, is it? The, it's going to come in at the 1618, which is, all, which is impossible. Bitcoin would have to go to zero to do that. Um, so basically what I'm looking at here is around a 127 extension, around 117, uh, 120s. That's the, where I'd look to buy Bitcoin. On a, on, on a higher time frame look. Now, if we go back down to the daily chart, there's lots of opportunities to short here. So 
We rally back up from here. We're going to look left for the most recent structure level that comes in there. Stops would go above the highs here. Okay, so you'd be looking at this much risk to a potential reward back down into structure of a little better than one to one or a continuation of that trend down into, grab my Fibonacci extension tool, swing high to swing low, up into the down into the 127 extension around $2.30, uh, $230 per Bitcoin. So we're, we've already broken below and as you can see closed below these previous lows. So the indication is that we're going to see more downside momentum here. However, the market is in an oversold condition, so a rally back up into around $312 is not going to be out of the realm of possibilities here before looking for that trend continuation down into the 127 extension. All right. Guys, that basically does it for this week. If you would like to, I do this every single day. Every morning, I run through my trades for the day with my syndicate group in the war room. And it's a, it's a live uh, video that I do every single day for those guys. And if you would like to join that, you can. I'll put the link underneath this video in the About section of the YouTube page. So you can just click on that link and it'll take you over and explain everything. I also uh, place, uh, Akil and I place trades and we let you guys know what we're trading and, and when we're trading it. And then when we come in in the morning, we discuss the trades, we talk about it. So it's not really a signal service for those of you guys who are looking for that. What it is, it's, it's a mechanism for training people using our own trades. So what I'm trying to do is, what Akil and I are trying to do is teach you the methodologies that we use to trade the markets every day, and more importantly, to give you kind of an over-the-shoulder look at what, what we're doing every day. And so there are, uh, you'll be in there with a host of other people. We've got new software coming out this year for uh, chat and video. All kinds of cool stuff coming in 2015, and I am very excited about it. I'm so glad that you're back with me for this for the next year, and let's just let's work really hard. Let's make 2015 the best year that we've ever had trading. Um, let's make it a turning point for your for you in your trading, and let's get on a uh, on a solid footing psychologically and with your education, so that you're in a position to benefit. Uh, when the market starts to move. Because one thing I am certain of, over the course of the next year, there is going to be an opportunity to make millions and millions of dollars. And you can have a piece of that if you're well-educated and you're very disciplined. And so click on the link, go check out the syndicate, and then I'll see you guys back here next week for another edition of the Forex Market Preview. Until then, good luck and good trading. I'll talk to you soon.